Okay, here we go. I think we're live. So this is episode two of the stroke correction process, plus a little bit of Q&A and some uh, ask me anything. So I have three questions that uh, some folks asked me today, and I was going to answer those too. So um, if, you're chi if you're chiming in here, let me know if you can hear me or if you can't hear me. I'm just going to roll through because I've got a lot to share with you and teach you uh, as far as improving your body position uh, for swimming more efficiently. And then uh, I definitely want you to hear these questions that uh, Kathleen and Jessica and Anastasia asked. So here we go. Um, so last week... I started, so we started a little bit of a series on uh, the stroke correction hierarchy or the stroke correction process. Thanks, Amanda. Okay, sounds good, she says. Uh, and so we, uh, I tried to give you this like visualization of say a pyramid. Uh, so raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if anybody uh, has ever heard of NCAA basketball coach John Wooden. Uh, he wrote a book, uh, about, well, he wrote several books, but he developed this, uh, he, he called it the pyramid of success. Uh, so I like to think of this as, <laughs> Drew, <laughs> I'm your hero? Oh boy, buddy. Um, so this is kind of like the pyramid of, pyramid of, of success uh, for swim technique, okay? So last week, there's gonna be five levels to this, okay? And so basically, this is just a process we go through to swim more efficiently. So on level one, we're gonna look at the basic fundamental things, okay? John, Coach John Wooden, uh, with all his basketball teams, the very first thing he taught his teams was on the first day of practice at the beginning of the season, he has basketball superstars in there and he's got his, uh, his green, green freshman in there, but he said, look, men, he'd gather around, okay, if you can imagine this, look, men, this, is how you put on your sock. This is how you put on your shoe. This is how you tie your shoelace, okay? I, I don't know if that's a true story, but this is what he did at the beginning of every season, Coach John Wooden, uh, with, with all his teams at the beginning of every year. And, the, and the, the reason is, okay, if a star player gets a measly little blister, on his foot because he didn't put on his socks, he didn't tie his shoes right. He gets a blister during uh, during uh, uh, during practice or something like this. Now it's not a life threatening injury, but it can certainly affect the game, right? So last week we talked about level one of our hierarchy here, which was which included breathing. Okay, for for swimming freestyle. Okay, triathletes, open water swimmers here. Are you with me? Uh, and so breathing, like Coach Wooden's socks and shoes and shoelaces, is. It's that fundamental thing that if you don't get it right, the rest can almost be disastrous, okay? If you lose a star player in the middle of a, a, a basketball game, we're talking NCAA championships, um, you know, uh, your star player's out because of a lousy uh, uh, blister, okay? Not good, all right? So in our case, we, we have to get the breathing, uh, being relaxed, and the exhalation, right? So that was level one last week. Uh, level two here, we're gonna move on to correct body position in the water. Okay, so level two is good body position. And I'm just gonna read a couple notes here. So underneath body position, what, we're gonna, what you want to be looking at is one, the effectiveness of your kick while you're swimming, developing good core awareness or uh, core engagement, and then head position. So that's all gonna fall under or will affect body position uh, as you're swimming. So let me run through a short little list here of a little checklist of things that you might check in on your own uh, that may be affecting poor body position. So now here's the thing with body position. Just try to get this image in your mind. And maybe some of you might resonate with this, but the one thing that I think of when I think of poor body position while swimming is I think of the, the guy or the gal or the swimmer who's, sing, who's swimming along with their legs, literally just almost dragging along the bottom of the pool, right? So major, major source of drag and resistance. You're just working way harder than you have to, okay? If the body position isn't such that your body position is kind of horizontal with the, um, with the surface of the water, right? So things that can affect just that, okay? That can affect body position. Holding your breath underwater. Last week I talked about that and that if the chest and the lungs are, are full of air, right? If you think of your body as a boat, the front of the boat is very high up, it's very buoyant, okay? That causes the legs to sink. Lifting your head while breathing, okay? The front end of the boat, 
uh, comes up again and your legs sink. Looking too far forward in the water, that can affect body position or cause poor body position. Kicking your legs, kicking from the knee versus kicking from the hip. We'll talk about that a little in a minute. Uh, a scissor kick, okay? So kicking with um, re really like um, uh, uh, if, if you have a pronounced crossover in front of the head or underneath your body as you pull through, that can cause the legs to really scissor apart. Again, you don't, now it's a double whammy. You don't have drag from low sinking legs. You got drag from your legs like scissoring and slicing apart, okay? Dorsiflexed ankles, what does that mean? So if this is my foot, if you were to uh, like flex your foot, get your curl up your, your toes toward your shin, okay? So inflexible ankles is kind of what I'm talking about. That can affect body position. Uh, under kicking, so basically maybe you're just not kicking enough. Poor core stabilization, pressing down during the catch, okay, at the front end of the stroke. If you're pushing down, that could cause the front end of your stroke to come up, the legs to go down, uh, and then poor hip flexibility. So these are all... Um, variables that can affect body position, okay? So the my goal here is not to have you thinking about all of these things all at once, but you might consider, um, you know, just going through this little checklist over the next couple of weeks and think about what do you do with each of those, okay? How is your head position? How, what, what are your, what's your ankle flexibility like? What's your catch like? Are you pressing down during the catch, okay? Uh, at, when I talk about uh, the kick here, for example, and core stabilization, uh, I'll tell you two of my favorite, very, very simple drills that almost instantly like correct a lot of that stuff, okay? Um, so let's move on. Uh, let me get to, uh, to my list here. So body position, and let's talk about the kick. What is an effective kick, all right? So a, a, a propulsive kick, okay, I'm speaking to triathletes and um, adult age group uh, swimmers and adult age group triathletes here. It's pretty unreasonable to expect or even aim to have a very propulsive kick. At best, uh, if you just learned to swim as an adult, let's say, um, at best, you're prob all the, the, pro the overall propulsion that you're going to be getting from your kick is only going to count for about 5% of, of all propulsion. All the rest, okay, the other 95% of propulsion that you're going to be getting out of your whole stroke as it, as it is, uh, is going to be coming from the arms and proper uh, catch and stroke timing, et cetera, okay? So it's a little bit unrealistic to just think that you're gonna develop a very, very propulsive leg kick, okay? We want, the, we want your kick to help your stroke, not hinder your stroke, okay? In other words, we don't want a scissor kick or something like that, right? Okay, so we do want an effective kick, but to, to a limit, okay? Ankle flexibility is gonna be important. Uh, you wanna be kicking from the hip, okay, these are things that make up a good leg kick. So ankle flexibility uh, and kicking from the hip, not kicking from the knee, and then fixing any sort of scissor kick, all right? I talked about that already. So you want, and to fix a scissor kick, it's most likely occurring because you have a pronounced crossover with the arms out in front of the head or underneath your body as you pull through. Okay, that causes your rotation to get very unstable. And what winds up happening is your legs need to splay apart to stabilize or re-rotate you back over so you can take a breath, et cetera. Okay, so if fixing a scissor kick is the thing that you're looking at, you wanna be looking at your arms, not the kick itself. Does that make sense? So there's kind of a cause and effect relationship there. Okay, um, a couple of drills that might help with this, help you develop a better leg kick. Um, in the Swim Smooth Guru, uh, and our local squad members uh, here in Louisville will have access to this uh, under uh, in, in the drill videos, is a drill called the Sea Anchors Drill. Uh, so what you can do here is with a pull buoy on, or you can try it if you're brave enough without a pull buoy, is not kick your legs, swim normal freestyle, not kick your legs, but get both your feet kind of in a dorsiflexed position like this, okay? So your toes point literally straight down to the bottom of the pool and you're gonna feel that drag right there versus let your ankles go loose and floppy, maybe point them, uh, invert the toes a little bit like so and get those feet uh, uh, straighter from the ankle down to your toes, okay? So that's one that one way that one drill that will give you kind of a contrast in, in feeling like, in feeling a lot of drag by the toes being pointed straight down to the pool versus straighter and more flexible. Um, uh, hip flexibility is going to come into play too. Uh, hip or ankle stretches and ankle uh, and hip 
stretches. Um, so there are some uh, ankle stretches. One way to stretch your ankles is to, you can sit on your legs or on your, uh, sit on your heels, basically on the floor. Um, that will definitely stretch your ankles out. We do in our squad sessions, for example, on a, on a Tuesday, on a Technique Tuesday, um, probably 25%-ish of our squad session, you're wearing flippers. So the, by mere virtue of wearing fins, the long kind, those will, over time, over the course of weeks and months, give you some better ankle flexibility, okay? Um, so just wearing fins will help with that. Uh, hip flexibility and stretching. Uh, later on, I'm going to answer Anastasia's question. She asked about uh, some strength, uh, or she asked about the Swim Squad Academy, but somebody asked about um, uh, strength and flexibility, mobility. Uh, but Coach Karen Reynolds, who's a local coach here, she gave us or prescribed us a strength and conditioning routine and flexibility routine that's going to be included in the um, uh, in the Swim Squad Academy. Okay, uh, so that's our uh, monthly uh, coaching membership. Um, and so it, you want to do some hip flexibility, very simple one. Uh, take a knee down the floor uh, and then press the hips forward. That's going to, you're going to feel that stretch the front of the hip, for example. Um, so gaining some flexibility in the hip is definitely going to help with uh, the effectiveness of your kick. Now, coming back to this, remember, we're talking about variables that can affect or improve body position. Okay. So uh, points on the leg kick uh, being more effective. Core awareness is next. Okay, this really starts with just developing better posture. Okay, thinking about while you're swimming, right? Uh, we, I'm sitting here at my desk and I tend to hunch over like so. You have to be thinking about chest forward, shoulders back. You can even swim with that sort of same proud posture. Okay, we're not sticking the chest out forward like really strong like this, but just with good posture. Um, <laughs> Tell me if this resonates with you. So one of the reasons, if you've, if this has ever happened with you, you're swimming in a pool, uh, maybe there's like a little 11-year-old girl swimming in the lane next to you. Okay, imagine this. And she is just flying back and forth, right? One of the reasons she's so good at that is, one, it doesn't, you don't, there's not a lot of power required to swim very fast and efficiently. But that young lady, because she's maybe not spent a decade or two sitting hunched over at a desk or with poor posture or triathletes here, you're in arrow position like this, shoulders hunched forward like this. Um, the one reason that little 11 year old girl is swimming laps around you is because she just has better posture. She's able to transfer the power from her core rotation to her arm stroke, for example. Um, that all begins with better posture. Drills that we do to promote better posture and alignment, kicking on the side drill, where you're thinking shoulders back, chest forward, okay? Uh, building upon those, the 616 drill, the 636 drill, okay? Just thinking about good, proud posture while you're swimming those, not allowing your arm to cross over like so with the shoulders rounded. Uh, a very simple little mantra that you can use while you're swimming, okay? One, two, straight. One, two, straight, okay? That word straight is at the same moment that your arm enters into the water and stretches forward, you wanna have a nice uh, stretch forward and then pull the shoulders back on that one stroke, okay? Just maintaining, helping you maintain good posture. Um, lower core stability. Uh, some of those issues I mentioned earlier, under kicking, poor core st stabilization, uh, kicking from the knee. Uh, we do some, what we call torpedo kicking or streamline kicking with fins on or without fins. Um, right there and while you're doing that you're in this nice tall stretched out position like so you're thinking about stretching out your lower core in this instance okay uh stretching the spine right here from uh from your 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 belt buckle up to your rib cage okay just keeping your lower back flatter uh, rotating your pelvis backward in the in that uh in that same motion uh, squeezing, squeezing the bum cheeks together. Okay. That's another way to just get better core stabilization happening. All right, let's move on some more head position. Okay. The last thing that really affects body position in our sort of hierarchy of, uh, stroke correction here. So remember this is level two that we're looking at. Uh, we look at, we look at breathing and relaxation first. We want to look at uh, body position next and part underneath body position here is head position. Uh, one very common mistake that, uh, and I fell into this category, um, but I, I hope I know a little bit better now, was uh, swimming with your head too far down, 
okay, that does a couple things. One, you might have been taught this, and I taught this, was head down causes the hips and the legs to come up, okay? Possibly, possibly, but we know there's so many other variables that are now affecting this poor body position, right? It's not just, not just pushing your head down is, going, is the only variable that could help with that, all right? The one detriment, the one downside to pushing your head down like this is it tends to bend, bend your body up here in the, in the upper spine, okay? And there we go. We're losing posture again. Does that make sense? Um, you, you have a reduced sense of proprioception. There's a really fancy word for saying like feel for what you're doing with your arms out in front of your head. If your head is down, I can't, you can't really see what's happening there. You can't see your catch. You can't see your entry for example. So just lifting your head up a little bit, you'll be able to catch a glimpse of your, your hand entry and your catch in sort of your upper peripheral vision right there. The other benefit to having your head lifted up a little bit, open water, okay? Sighting in the open water, being able to draft and follow other, other swimmers, okay? There's a up to a 38% energy savings by drafting somebody out in the open water. And if you got your head down, you don't know where anybody is. You can't follow them. You can't follow the bubbles. You can't see their feet and toes in front of you, okay? Uh, so those are three things that really affect a body position plus a list of different variables that you might just take a look at. Um, if you look, take a look in the Swim Smooth Guru, uh, you don't have to uh, go too far to find some drills and explanations on how to improve some of those things. So you could have the very standard version, the, the $2 a month uh, subscription. And uh, if you need some help finding uh, some videos or a couple of the, the modules or the courses in there uh, to help you with this, uh, this stuff, just swimming more efficiently, just improving your body position, reducing drag, uh, as it were, uh, I can help you find that, okay? All right, let's crank along here. This is getting, getting long. I'm gonna try to finish up these three questions here uh, from Jessica, Anastasia, and uh, Kathleen. So Jessica asked about shoulder strength exercises. Anastasia asked about, or she said, tell me more about the Swim Squad Academy for people that don't live in our area. Okay. So in the Louisville area, uh, Anastasia is originally from this area. She's moved out to California uh, and she's no longer with us. Um, so she asked, would it, would it be workouts delivered to your inbox, to training peaks? How many workouts a week? Uh, and then Kathleen's question was, at the moment of the lead, at the moment that lead hand enters the water, where's the other hand supposed to be? All right, so let's go through these. Uh, Jessica, really quickly here, strength uh, exercises for the shoulder. Um, what I'm gonna encourage you to look at, uh, and what I will do after this message here, Jessica, is I'll post a link to a video that's here in the Swim Squad Facebook group that me and my friend Adam did uh, a couple of years back, but is a great, Warm up and strengthening routine using uh, he's the developer of the uh, a band okay uh, a very low tension band and getting it's it's one a warm up routine but there are some strength exercises in there as well uh, for uh, strengthening the upper back and shoulders uh, and then the stretches in there so it's this is kind of a two pronged approach for swimmers, we want to, one, uh, we're notorious for having being very tight here in the chest and the pecs and across the front of the shoulders. So we wanna keep that area stretched out. Plus, we want to increase uh, mobility and motor control in the upper back and uh, shoulder blades, upper thoracic area, okay? So any sort of strength exercises you're doing, Jessica, would be strengthening and helping mobilize your upper back. So. Uh, for example, uh, there was a, uh, there's an exercise, uh, that I used to do with Adam quite a bit. You'd lay on your side. This is a mobility exercise. You'd lay on your side. You have your hands closed like this one hand on top of the other, kind of like a closed book. Okay. And you might put a foam roller between your legs and your knees bent at the hip and you'd open up right here. Right. And then you bring the other arm up right? And then close it up. For example, I'm doing kind of a rough job explaining this here. Um, but what we want is some mobility in the upper back first and motor control of those fine muscles around the shoulder that control uh, the action of the shoulder blade as you're going through your swim stroke. And then any kind of strength exercises that uh, strengthen the back, uh, a dumbbell row, for example, a bent over dumbbell row, a seated row, pull-ups on a bar or assisted or unweighted uh, pull-ups. Uh, all good strength exercises for to support mo uh, flexibility in the chest, 
mobility in the shoulders and strength uh, in the shoulders as well, okay? Um, all right, moving on to Anastasia. She said, uh, tell me more about the Swim Squad Academy. I'll just give you kind of the rundown. Here's the big question uh, that I've been trying to answer uh, over uh, my career as a swim coach uh, in the triathlon space. And it's basically this. It's, it's who, do you, who do you listen to? Uh, I just wrote a long email to our, uh, to, our, uh, to our squad and to anybody who might be a, scri- a subscriber last night. But I told you the story that uh, you know back in 2012 when Coach Barry Stokes and I got together, we wanted to build a program that was for like the, the average everyday Joe, let's call him, triathlete. Okay, not the superstars, not the elite pro athlete. Um, you know, there was nobody out there that really had a program for athletes like you. Okay, um, so the big question then was like, you know, at that time before we even got started, it was like, who do you listen to? Okay, so there's there might be a coach local to you, but they're kind of a, a uh, an age group swim club coach, and they don't really work with adults. And and then you could go to YouTube, and then who do you listen on YouTube? Right. So that's what the the Swim Squad Academy is all about. And if you want some information about that, uh, just like write the word Academy in the comments there. And uh, I can send you an application. I can send you some more information. We can set up a phone call. I can tell you about it. But if you're at a distance, okay, workouts, Anastasia are delivered. You'll get a reminder that the workouts for the week are ready, but they are in a private or a closed um, membership website area. All the workouts are downloadable. You can print off, download. They all will have, for example, uh, a little um, a little blurb, a two or three or four minute uh, um, instructional uh, video or audio of me explaining the workout, much like I do here in Louisville, where uh, you know we we gather around the 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 dry erase board before we get in the water, explain how the workout goes. Okay, so we just uh, that's all that's kind of the delivery process there, uh, and then we'll have some coaching calls. You'll have access to my uh, my uh, my call schedule, for example. Um, we're going to include, I'm hoping that uh, Coach Karen Reynolds is able to help me. She's a physical therapist, is able to help me put together uh, some strength and, and conditioning programming in there as well. Uh, and I'm trying to find somebody also probably in the new year to help us with some nutrition coaching uh, uh, inside of the academy as well. Uh, as far as how many workouts per week, three to five workouts. Uh, three to five workouts, and that's where our coaching uh, and planning will come in together. So, uh, you know, if you were to uh, start the program, we'd set some 30, 90-day goals, and we'd figure out what your schedule is, what your long-term goals are, and we'd create a weekly uh, training schedule for you. So there, you'd have access to as many as five swim workouts per week. Uh, that's not to say that you would be doing all of those, okay? But we'd, we'd have a specific plan uh, for you inside uh, the academy there, okay? So if that makes sense. Um, or if it doesn't make sense, just let me know. So if you're interested in some more information on that, um, I'm opening up 10 spots for that. Um, there's only eight, there's eight left as of today. Uh, lastly, Kathleen asked at, at the moment the lead hand enters the water, where is the other hand or where's the other hand supposed to be? So Kathleen, what you're talking about is this concept in swimming or in swim coaching that we call front quadrant timing. Okay, which basically states, I'm going to try to demonstrate this here a little bit. When you swim freestyle, the arms do not go round and round rotary fashion like this. Okay, like a windmill. Okay, when you watch all the elite swimmers, what generally happens here is hand goes into the water here. Okay, begins the catch and pull through. Meanwhile, this is the hand you're talking about. Catching, pulling through at that point. Kathleen, your hand is probably somewhere underneath your shoulder while the uh, the opposing hand is entering into the water. That's a really tough thing to really kind of process and think about in the moment while you're swimming. So some ways that we uh, we work on this, Kathleen, this front quadrant timing or the timing of the strokes, for example, uh, uh, is there's a few dr- few drills that we do. Okay, the most the most simple drill that we do that I love for this is the 616 drill. Okay. If you notice when you do the 616 drill, you kick on the side. Okay. You take a stroke. But meanwhile, there's a couple of things that you do not do. You do not let the hands come together in front of your head, for example, and then pull the opposing arm back. The hand underneath the water starts to pull back just a little bit right before that lead hand 
enters the water, right? That's the proper stroke timing that we want. There's an old, old school drill uh, in swimming called the catch up drill, okay? That's, that's one way that we can get the timing pretty close. The danger in the catch up drill is we could wind up like over gliding. We could end up with kind of a, a, a stroke that's too long, too lengthy, and, and is over glidy. Okay. Uh, that's why the 616 drill is, uh, is much more beneficial. Um, something you could do to help feel this a little bit better is a variation on the 616 drill called the baton 616. So here's where this uh, comes handy is if you struggle with figuring out how to catch and hold the water while this hand is entering, okay? Hold something in your hand, like a little baton or a pen, or I have these little um, uh, um, uh, uh, nutrition, empty sports nutrition tubes that I'll give an athlete and I'll make them hold that baton and pass it from one hand to the other. We'll do a length or two like that. And then I'll, I'll take it away from them and I'll tell them to try to copy the same stroke timing, okay? Uh, sorry, I'm I'm getting pinged here. All right, so I hope, Kathleen, that helps as far as thinking about the timing. I'm going to show you, or I'll pop into the comments here. Actually, I'm going to do this right now. There is a course inside the Swim Smooth Guru that I'm putting in there right now that deals with this precisely, the rhythm and timing of your stroke. And so that should hopefully give you some insight uh, into what you should be doing there. Okay. All right. That's it, everybody. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, looks like there's still eight of you on here. So thanks so much for tuning in. I'm just going to check the comments here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Amanda was here. Thank you. Uh, heard about him. Uh, who are you talking about there, Amanda? Bubble, bubble, breathe, all time favorite. I love it. Kelly, what did you ask here? I'm about to board a plane. Copy. Using a, okay, quick questions, quick answers here. Is using a snorkel a, a good idea? What are the training benefits? All right, this is really good uh, from Kelly. Kelly asked this. Um, the snorkel, the only reason I don't like the snorkel is because it's hard to get the breathing right at first. It's kind of tricky, right? You stick the snorkel in your mouth and the first thing you want to do when your head's submerged, right? You should, you're theoretically like inhaling. Well, you can get some water up your nose. One way to combat that, one way to fix that is to wear a nose clip as well. Kelly, I think, and a very experienced swimmer like yourself, uh, you shouldn't have too much difficulty with that. Um, you might swim a lap or two, you get some water up your nose, and then you'll figure out how to close off that little valve at the back of your nose there so that you don't get water up your nose, or you can just wear a nose clip. Um, that's the only reason I don't like the snorkel. The reason I do like the snorkel, <clears throat> one, that snorkel sits, it's a front-mounted snorkel right here. And it can act like a little bit of a rudder. So if, if you swim and you tend to, for example, if, if you're a swimmer that tends to have a little excessive like head movement, okay, that snorkel mounted on the front of your head like that can help you feel what it's like to have a nice, straight, steady head position, okay? The other benefit to the snorkel is you don't have to turn your head, rotate to the side to breathe, okay? There's no um, interruption in your stroke. Okay, the one thing I always say is if your stroke's going to uh, fall apart or something's going to go wrong with your technique, it's more likely to occur on a breathing stroke. Well, with a snorkel on, you don't have any breathing strokes. So you can 100% pay attention to what's going on during your catch and pull through uh, what's going on underneath the water, for example. Okay. Um, I'll wrap up by saying the, the, the last reason I'm not a big fan of the snorkel is because you know, I, I prefer that we learn how to swim correctly with good technique. Uh, all around, you know, including the breathing. Okay. But there are some, there are some definite uh, benefits there. All right. Kathleen says, thanks. I'm glad you got that, Kathleen. Great. Uh, basketball, baseball. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Amanda, you, uh, John Wooden. Okay. Go on. I will wrap up right here. This has been a long broadcast. Thanks for, uh, if you're still on here, thanks for tuning in. We're going to wrap up. Uh, if this was helpful, invite somebody in here to the Swim Squad, to the Facebook group. Uh, if it was helpful for you or if you know somebody who could benefit from lessons like this, uh, just uh, give them an invite. Let them in. Uh, would love to help them out. Of course, uh, this group continues to grow and gets better and better. We're all working together here. Uh, I got to give a shout out to Janine who gave us that spreadsheet with, all, with that race calendar for 2020. That was awesome. Uh, people have been using that. I got a message from somebody today, uh, Janine who sent me a copy of it with their own kind of 
plan mapped out over top of it. They printed it off and everything. Uh, and then this will probably get uploaded to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, <clears throat> um, please be sure to subscribe to the Swim, uh, the Swim Smooth Louisville uh, uh, channel here uh, or uh, share it around. And if you know somebody who could benefit from these tips, okay? All right, thanks everybody. Have an amazing, amazing weekend. I'll see you guys soon.